Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 166. Please turn to it. Page number 166. The very first problem on the page, number 99. Question number 99, we are told we are given two equations here. We are told that x, this is number 99, we are told that x times 2x plus 1 is equal to 0 and we are told that x plus half times 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. The question is what value of x would there be that will satisfy both of these equations? that will satisfy both of these equations. Whatever value of x that we're going to claim has to satisfy both of the equations at the same time. Let's find out what we can do here. Well, here we have two quantities. We have quantity x and 2x plus 1. So if we have two quantities a times b, if we are told that a times b is 0, but there are only two possibilities. One possibility is that either, either a is equal to 0, or the possibility is that b is equal to 0. Either a is equal to 0 or b equals 0 because if a is equal to 0, it doesn't matter what b is, a times 0 times b would be 0 and, and vice versa. Same thing here. So this implies, this implies that either, either x is equal to 0 or this quantity right here, 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. If 2x plus 1 were 0, then that would, that would, that would in turn would imply that x would have to be negative half. We solve this equation for, for x and we find out that 2x equals negative 1 and we divide by 2, we get equal to negative. Let's see what we get here. Similarly here, either x plus half is equal to 0, in which case it will imply that x is equal to minus half, or this guy is 0, or this guy is 0, 2x minus 3. If 2x minus, this is the or part, or 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, in which case 2x would, would have to equal 3, and x would have to equal 3 halves. I'm going to erase this bottom part, it's, otherwise it's going to be confusing. So it's either this or that. Well, the only value that appears common is either 0 or negative half, you see negative half here, or 3 halves. The only value that appears common in both of these two scenarios is negative half, and therefore x would have to be negative half. x cannot be 0, because if x were 0, what would happen? If x were 0, it would be fine here. 0 times anything is 0, but if x were 0, it, it will have a problem here. If x were 0 here, we'll end up half times the negative 3, if x is equal to 0, we'll end up with half times negative 3, and half times negative 3 is not 0. x cannot be 0. Similarly, x cannot be 3 over 2. 3 over 2 would work here, but it won't work here. 3 over 2 plus 2 times 3 over 2 plus 1 is not going to be 0. So the only value that works in both scenarios is when x is equal to half. That's it. The answer is negative half. Let's go on to the next one, number 100. Number 100, just give me one second, okay? As always, I have done it again. I explained too much, didn't I? Number 100. Now, in number 100, as far as, as far as the problem itself is concerned, it's just a problem, it's a math problem, and that's all there is. And math problems do not require, do not assume any outside knowledge. But as a side note, if you're curious, I'll tell you what, what number 100 is all about. Problem number 100 deals with something in real life, something that is known as... Now I'll have to be careful how to pronounce it. Rich, Richter's scale, I believe it's called. Richter's scale. Or it's Richter's scale, I, I believe. It's a scale that is used to measure the intensity of earthquakes. Keep listening. And what happens is that in that scale, the nature of this scale is such that it's a logarithmic scale it's a scale based on logarithm of base 10. 
But now what that means is that what that means is that a reading of zero reading of zero implies that it is 10 raised to zero. And we know that any number raised to zero is one. So that's the reading of one. Reading of one equals 10 raised to one, which is 10. In other words, on Richard on, on Richter's scale, an earthquake of magnitude of one as opposed to um, a magnitude of, uh, of zero as opposed to magnitude of one, magnitude of one is 10 times as strong as the one with the magnitude of zero. Let's keep on going. A reading of two, again, a reading of two would imply 10 times two, which is 100. And therefore, uh, in a richest scale, if you have an earthquake with the magnitude of two, a magnitude of two earthquake is 10 times as strong as an earthquake of magnitude of one. An earthquake of magnitude of two is not twice as strong as the magnitude of one. It is 10 times as strong because one represents 10 raised to one, two represents 10 raised to two, and so on and so forth. And it goes on forever. So here's our scale. Here's our scale. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so forth. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so forth. And 0 represents, uh, 0 would represent uh, 10 raised to 0, 10 raised to 0. That's the zero here. That's the these these are exponents. On the top we we we, we have the exponents here. This is ten raised to one. This is ten raised to two. Ten raised to three. Ten raised to four. Ten raised to five, and so on and so forth. The question is this. The question is this. The question is, reading. If we have a reading of eight, is how many? How many times? A reading of 3. A reading of 10 is how many times a reading of 3. But now that we understand what this scale is about, all about, it's very simple. It is very simple because a reading of 8, a reading of 8 means 10 raised to 8. 10 raised to 8. And a reading of 3, a reading of 3 would mean, would mean 10 raised to 3. That's all. And what they're, what they're asking here is that this amount is how many times stronger this earthquake earthquake of a of magnitude 8 is how many times stronger compared to the earthquake of magnitude 3 it's very simple you just divide the two quantities 10 raised to 8 divided by 10 raised to 3 is equal to 10 raised to 5 10 raised to 5 is 1 with 5 zeros 1 2 3 4 5 the answer is is 100,000 times an earthquake of magnitude of 8 has an intensity of 100 times the 100,000 times the earthquake of magnitude of 3. That's what we are done. It is 100,000 times. The answer is 100,000 times. And that's all there was. Let's go to the next one. Number 101. Number 101. This, this note, as I said, it was a side note, the fact that I told you that it's, it, it, the top question pertains with Richard's scale of earthquake, that's not something we need to know to solve the problem. We can solve the problem. The problem is very straightforward. If uh, reading of 8 is how many times the reading of uh, th 3, uh, the answer is 10 raised to 8 divided by 10 raised to 5. That's it. One does not need to know anything at all about the earthquake scale, a scale of uh, intensity, a measurement of intensity of earthquake. Number 101. In 101, they are telling us mean is how many times, how many times greater than median. Mean is how many times greater than median for the following quantity, for this quantity, n, n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 4, and n plus 8. Well, first thing we notice is I want to make sure that it is this is this, this is how it is laid out in the book and this is not how I did it. That's exactly how it is laid out in the problem itself. So the first thing we notice is that they are already given to us in order, in ascending order actually here. They, they are in increasing order. So this is n plus 0, this is n plus 1, 2, 4, and 8. They are arranged in order. So therefore median is very straightforward. The median is the middle number right here. This is the median. All we have to do now is to figure out the mean of these five quantities and then 
simply answer the question. Mean is how many, how many, how many greater than, how many greater? This doesn't even make any sense. How much greater, you should say. Mean is how much greater. Mean is how much greater than median. Let's do it. So now we'll figure out the mean, which is not a big deal at all. We have to just figure out the mean of 0 plus 1, right here, plus 2, plus 4, plus 8, and divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 5 quantities. That's it. And that's what there is. 8 plus 4 is 12, 12 plus 2 is 14, 14 plus 1 is 15, 15 divided by 5 is 3. So it turns out, and forget about the n, n appears in everywhere, so there is no need to carry the n, uh, n throughout the journey, do you understand? So what that means is that the mean is equal to n plus 3. This is n plus 3. Because every one of them has plus n to it. Every one has a plus n in it. So it's, technically it is 15 plus 5n, but there is no need to carry all of this thing. It's n plus 3. The median we found out was n plus 2. Median was n plus 2. Mean we just found out is n plus 3. Therefore, mean is how much greater than median? The answer is it is 1 greater. The answer is 1. Mean is 1 unit more than the median. Let's do 103, shall we? 102. Give me one second again. Mean is 1 more than median. One hundred and two. In one hundred and two, they give us the equation: t equals five over nine. We are told k minus thirty-two. When t is equal to two ninety, how much is k? When k when t is equal to two ninety, how much is k? Using this equation, this equation will convert. Uh, temperature uh, uh, from whatever it is, I believe, from Celsius to Kelvin. It really doesn't matter what they call it. We just have to solve the math problem. Actually, don't they don't even say anything. So there again, that that's that's a that's the formula, I believe. But they have made some changes. I I think it's supposed to be centigrade and Fahrenheit. But anyway, it doesn't matter. There's an equation here. Question is when t is 290, how much is k? Let's do it here. Substitute 290 here for t. T we are told is 290, so put it in here, in, in the place of 290, uh, T, we put down 290 equals 5 times 9 times K minus 32. The next thing we have to do is to get rid of this 5 over 9, we can, get, we can get rid of this thing by multiplying both sides of the equation by 9 over 5. 9 over 5. There you go. So now 9 divided by 9, this 9 drops out and this 5 is going to drop out. And we are just left with k minus k minus 32 on this side. And here we have this quantity here, which is 9 times 290 over 5. We are almost done. We are almost done. Now we have to divide 290 by 5. Obviously, we can't divide 9 by 5, so we're going to divide 290 by 5 because it ends in 0. We can divide by 5. How many 5s in a 29? 29 has 29 has 5 5. 5 5 is at 25. The remaining 4 goes and joins to 0. And it becomes 40. How many 5s in a 40? 40 has 8 5s. That's it. So the answer is 58 times 9. How much is 58 times 9? How the hell do I know? 58 times 9 is going to be 580 minus 58. 580 minus 58. Why 580 minus 58? Because 580 is 10 times 9. This quantity, this quantity is 10 times, uh, 10 times, 10 times 58 rather. This quantity is 10 times 58. So if you have 10 58, and if you subtract 1 58, you're going to end up with 9 58, which is what this is, 9 times 58. 580 minus 58, we know 580 minus 60 should be 520, so this should be 522. 522, and that represents k minus 32. We're not interested in k minus 32. We mind the k by itself, so it's going to be this quantity. The k is going to be this quantity, 522 plus the 32. And we are done. <coughs> the answer is 554. The answer is 554, answer choice D. Let's move on then, 103 in the next column. 103 in the next column. Or if you give me just one brief second, just give me one brief second here, I want to make a decision here. 
we are 15 minutes into it. Should we continue with this thing and, and finish the entire page or should we stop here and do it in the next video? If I continue here, it's going to be a half hour long video. I just want to warn you. Let's go to the next one. Number 103. Number 103, listen to me for a second here. Number 103 is a strange question. It talks about the water coming from one outlet flowing at a rate and it takes, takes nine hours to fill the pool and all that. You have the book in front of you, you can read the problem. I'm going to read the problem. I'm going to make you look at this problem in a little bit different way. Listen carefully. It says, so we are dealing with a water faucet. Water, fa water is coming from one faucet and is able to fill up the pool in nine hours. We have another faucet which is able to fill up the faucet uh, uh, pool in five hours. The question is if we have two faucets running at the same time, how long will it take for the pool to fill up or to fill up? Very simple, very straightforward question. Another way to look at the same problem is to look at it as a work problem, to look at it as a work problem. And this is what we're dealing with. What we're dealing with here is that A, we are told, takes nine hours to do the job. And B, we are told, takes five hours to do a job, to do a job alone, that is. Do you understand? The question is, how long will they take together? If they were to work together, how long will they take together? Now listen very carefully. Here are the answer choices. I'm going to put them first. 0 0.22, 0 0.31, 0 0.31, 2.5, 3.21, and 4.56. Now typically, as you know, we do not put down answer choices on the blackboard. So if I'm putting down answer choices on the blackboard, there obviously there is a reason. Now here's how, here's how you here's how you look at it. Okay, listen very carefully. And the beauty of this uh, this method of learning is that you can always rewind the video and listen to it as many times as you want, as opposed to studying in the classroom where you can't rewind the teacher. So here's what it is. If you have trouble understanding what what I'm the argument that I'm trying to make here, you can rewind it and listen to it again. If both of them working at the same pace, if 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 the slow guy if the slow guy works works as if the, if the slow guy works as fast as the fast guy, I'm making it too much faster now. I, I didn't want to write all of this down. So slow guy is this guy. He takes nine hours. If all of a sudden, for some strange and inexplicable reason, if he if he started working as fast as the fast guy, then fast guy fin can finish the job in five hours. If he finishes the job also in five hours, that means if they were to both work as fast as the fast guy. Since he can do the job, one job in five hours, he can do the job in five hours together if they were to work, they should be able to do the job in two and a half hours. So if, if both of them work as fast as the fast guy, they can do the job in two and a half hours. If the slow guy works as fast as the fast guy, the time, the amount of time that it will take is two and a half hours. Similarly, if the fast guy, if the fast guy works as slow, as slow as the slow guy, for some strange reason, if fast guy decided that he wants to work as slow as the slow guy, slow guy takes nine hours. If, if, if Mr. B also took nine hours, then in four and a half hours, he will do half a job. In four and a half hours, he will do half a job and the whole job will be done in four and a half hours. Which means in that case, in the worst case scenario, the amount of money, amount of time that they should take is four and a half hours. What all of this tells us, what all of this tells us is that the amount of time, the total amount of time that they will take, total time that they will take to do the job together has to lie somewhere between two and a half and four and a half. It has to lie somewhere between two and a half and four and a half. This is a simple logical thinking tells me, simple logic, pure logic tells me that any answer choice that they give me that falls outside this range is not possible, it's nonsensical. Let's see what we can do. It has to be something more than two and a half hours. It can never be two and a half hours because none of them, they're not working as slow, uh, they're as fast. Both of them are not working as fast as the fast guy. So it cannot be two, it's not equal sign, you see? It has to be more than that. Same thing here. It has to be more than two and a half hours. It has to be less than four and a half hours. It cannot be 0.22, that is silly. It cannot be 0.31, that's silly. It cannot be 2.5, that's silly. It cannot be 4.56 because it cannot be more than four and a half. That's it, the answer is three point. This is the answer. Now, if I were taking the exam, this is how I would do the problem. 
Now, if you're hell bent on it, if you feel that this is this is somehow immoral or unethical or cheating, and if you're hell bent on doing it like a good schoolgirl or good schoolboy, then just to please you, I'll do it the proper way. Do you understand? But I want to warn you. I want to warn you that even the so-called proper way of mind is not going to be very proper. So here's another way. Here's another way. That's it. We are done. But here's another way. Another way to solve this problem. Another way to solve this problem is ask yourself in 45 hours, in 45 hours, what is 45? What is all of a sudden 45 come from? It fell from the sky. It fell from the sky because 45 is 9 times 5, which means 45 is the least common multiplier, LCM. 45 can be divided evenly by 9, and 45 can be divided by evenly by 5. That's the smallest number that you can find that is divisible by both 9 and 5. We could have taken 90, we could have taken 450, we could have taken 45 million. But the smallest number that we can think of that is evenly divisible by 9 and 5, that is called the least common multiplier, and that's 45, LCM. In 45 hours, in 45 hours, A can do, well, it takes 9 hours to do a job. In 45 hours, A can do 5 jobs. Think of these as jobs. In 45 hours, B can do, B can do, well, he takes five hours. So in 45 hours, he should be able to do nine jobs. A can do five jobs, and B can do nine jobs. Nine jobs. In other words, they can do 14 jobs in 45 hours. 14 jobs in 45 hours. If they can do 14 jobs in 45 hours, they should be able to do one job. They should be able to do one job in 45 over 14. That's your answer. 45 over 14, as you can clearly see, 45 over 15, 45 over 15 would have been exactly 3. This is something little less than 3. Or rather, 45, 45 over 15 would have been 3, since we are dividing it by a smaller number, is slightly more than 3. Slightly more than 3. But I shouldn't have to make all this fuss about it. You can clearly see that 45 over 14 is not going to be 4 something. It's not going to be 2 something. That's the answer. The answer is D. Do you understand? That's all. Let's carry on. I'm going to quickly finish up the other three problems as well. Or perhaps not because number 105 is an algebra problem. And so is the next one. Let's stop right here. This, this, this is getting too long of a video. I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to do the next three problem in the next video. Okay? Bye now.